Hello everyone. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Hello everyone. We're gonna start talking about some cloth down cheddars soon. Um, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give a few, you know, a few moments for us to get started before I start talking about cloth down cheddars and start eating some, some food basically. Um, and I'm gonna let a few more people log in. Oh, blimey, gosh, there's quite a few. <laughs> no pressure. Um, hello to everyone. Do let me know if you're logging in from another country. I'm currently in uh, Buckinghamshire in the UK, um, but do shout out if you're, if you're tuning in from other parts of the world. Um, I know that there's a few guys over on the west coast of the States and uh, an east coast. Um, so hello, hello, hello. Thank you guys for joining and for joining the British Cheese Weekender. More importantly, showing your appreciation. Oh my goodness. Fantastic. We've got people coming in from across the world. This is brilliant news. Thank you so much, guys. Um, looking forward to trying some cheese with you. I hope everyone's enjoying the bank holiday weekend if you're in the UK. Or uh, if, you're, if you're further afield, I hope you've got some nice weather because it is roasting here. Um, yeah, it's definitely sun tanning weather. Although right now I swear I'm in a sauna. Um, I didn't need to leave my cheese out for too long to, uh, to get up to temperature. It's uh, absolutely sweltering <laughs> in this room <laughs> right now. Uh, but uh, I hope you, guys are, hope you guys are having a nice weekend. Not long until, uh, until the weekend if you're not having a bank holiday or celebrating VE Day, very importantly, today, which is, is fantastic. How's everyone doing, though? Are you enjoying some cheese? Has everyone got cheese with them? I hope they do, because um, it'd be good to do some taste-alongs. If you would like to buy some cheese after I've done my talk, please do head to the Quix website, where you can buy the cheeses that I'm specifically going to be talking about. But we also have a massive list of other small scale and independent shops who are selling cheese online at the moment. Um, it's really, really important to support these smaller guys. Um, you know, a lot of them are family run businesses. So please, please, please do make sure that you support buy local, buy small scale, um, you know, and, and buy British. Uh, we need to really support our guys at this moment in time. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's horrendous times, but I'm going to talk a little bit about why we need to um, at the end of this. But that's what the Big Cheese Weekender is all about. It's, it's, it's about promoting British artisanal cheese. Um, it's about getting that awareness out and making it a little bit more approachable. So I hope by the end of my talk today, um, you guys are going to have a little bit more uh, of an understanding of what, what our cheese is about and, and it not being too scary. You know, when you go into a cheesemonger, we're all here to help. We all, we all, we all love cheese. And as long as, oh, hello, Texas. Um, and, uh, and, and as long as you, as long as you can go in and, and buy local and, 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 and ask the guys behind the counter, they'll be able to help you. Um, so we're, we're all here, here to support British, here to support artisanal and small scale. Okay, I think, uh, I think enough of you have logged in and I've wasted enough of time um, from, uh, from, from my small talk. Okay, so um, to start with, my name's Poppy. I am the Export and Multiple Retail Manager for Quix. I've been working with them for quite some time and uh, it is a real honour to work for the family and the farm. Um, I want to talk to you today about cheddar. Now, most people think cheddar is cheddar it's a bit boring but if you've never come across cloth bound cheddar i would really ask you to forget everything you know about cheddar and to reconsider um, what i'm going to be talking about so when you go to the supermarket most of you will buy cheddar and it will look kind of like this there is nothing wrong with it it's uh, you know it can be used for so many different things but when i talk about cloth bound cheddar i'm talking about this now, this isn't a real cheese, I'm afraid to say, because if it was a real cheese, it would weigh about 27 to 28 kg. Um, this is my pretend version. But this is effectively the size of what our cheeses are. Um, and if you're in America, that would be about a 60 pound piece of cheese. Um, 
We have been making cheese on our farm for quite a significant period of time and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our um, history and our heritage and why we make cheese like that. Um, it's a very traditional, artisanal way of making cheese. It's really labour intensive and it's incredibly hands-on. All of our cheese is made by hand. Um, we have 10 cheese makers. I've got a picture of Grant here. That is one of our guys. Um, and it is really, really hard work. So to give you a little bit of history um, about Quicks, I always start with a bit of a history lesson and I promise this does, um, this stuff does have meaning <laughs> towards Quicks. When I was at school, I used to learn this rhyme when we were studying the Tudor period, which was divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived, which basically relates back to King Henry VIII and his six wives. I know it's a little bit gruesome, but it does have meaning. So when he was divorcing his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, he had to go to the Pope for a divorce. Pope said no. So King Henry VIII was a little bit disgruntled, went back home and, uh, or he was at home and got the news and was, was significantly annoyed. He was trying to marry Anne Boleyn, who was a bit of a floozy, um, but had promised him a son. So at this moment in time, he's going, fine, if the Pope won't give me a divorce, I'm going to divorce Catherine anyway. And in doing so, he realised at the time that all the land in England was owned by Catholic monasteries. And he's going, well, I'm the king of this land. Why on earth should all the land be owned by Catholic monasteries and I'm not even a Catholic anymore? So what he did was he took all of that land back off the Catholic monasteries and handed it out to people he wanted to carry favour with. He handed the piece of uh, land that we now farm on in Devon to a man named Thomas Bidwell. And my boss Mary's great 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 14 generations down the line grandfather married Thomas's daughter Elizabeth in our local church so we have been farming on the land for coming up for 500 years now um, you know we can see the name quick which is um, Mary's family name um, all around the county and it's, it's pretty impressive so so we've been there for a decent amount of time um, we've been farming the land which is now around 2400 acres although originally would have been about 3,000 at the time. Um, it's full of, of, of orchards, um, redwood forests that Mary's father planted. Um, we've got rare, um, rare breed apple trees. Um, we have lots of rivers, lots of arable land as well, and some, some really old kind of historical sites as well. We're not far from Stonehenge, just to give you context of the kind of history that is in the area. So it's a pretty special place, and if you're ever down near Exeter or, or in Devon, I'd really recommend that you, you, you go and check it out. It's in Newton St. Cyrus. So, um, 14 generations down the line, um, Mary Quick, who is now the helm um, alongside her siblings, and they make up the board of our company. Um, Mary's mother, Prue, set up the dairy in the uh, 70s after Mary's father applied for a cheesemaking license. Now, the good old British Post, it, he applied for the license and nothing came through for a good 10 years. Um, so, he had moved on to other ventures and Mary's mother, Prue, took on uh, making cheese in the dairy with all of her children in tow. And, uh, and that's why we started making cheese on a commercial scale. So the way we make cheese is, is very much by hand and we wrap it in cloth. Now it looks kind of like this and it's a very fine, fine muslin. And the reason we do this is because it allows our cheese to breathe as it ages. Um, so it allows moisture to come out of the cheese. So moisture to slowly come out of the cheese and for the air to get into the cheese. So it yields a far drier product in our cheese than you would find in this kind of cheese. Remember, moisture is weight and weight is money. Um, but this is the old world way of making cheeses. Now, the reason air getting into our cheese is so special is because the air in the atmosphere within which we mature our cheese has an incredible flavour profile that it, it permeates through the cloth. We call it microflora um, or a mould garden and it's not mould that you should be scared of, um, it is amazing mould that has incredible flavour profiles that can impart on our cheeses. So the older the cheese, 
the more flavorful against the rind the cheese is going to be. So when we try the cheeses in a bit, I'm going to tell you how to try it so that you can see the impact of the air, literally the air has had on our cheese. Now you're never going to get that with something that is like this. Each batch of our cheese tastes different. We taste every single batch once a month. We have an external grader and a team of guys that taste the cheeses to make sure that we know what the flavor profiles are like. Um, you know, we could get meaty and brothy one day. We could get pineapple another day. Trying them against each other is really incredible, but it's a total reflection of what a handmade cheese can be like. You know, it's, 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 it's not standard. It's something different every single time, which is quite exciting from our perspective. So in our dairy, I've already mentioned, we have 10 guys and between them, they have over a century's worth of experience, which is pretty special. They are lifting and turning these truckles on a daily basis. Now I've done it myself. Um, I was pretty useless at it, although I was caught on camera at the moment that we were doing it, so it was fantastic. As far as I'm aware, I'm an expert cheesemaker. Um, it is a, um, a very, very special process to make a cheddar, and there's actually a method called cheddaring, which is whereby you stack your cheddar curds until they almost have pushed out so much whey that you get these kind of non bready type things. Now, in the next few weeks um, on the Quicks Instagram, I'm gonna be doing far more in-depth um, tutorials about cheese making if you are interested. I'm afraid I've only got half an hour that's been allocated to me by the uh, organizers today. So I'm gonna have to keep it pretty short and sharp. But what I would really recommend is tuning in if you'd like to know more about how we actually make cheese as well. Um, but what we do at the end of uh, the, the, the general process of us making our cheeses is we wrap it in this cloth and it's all done by hand. So here's one of our guys wrapping it in the cloth like I showed you earlier. Um, and that again is very bespoke to this handmade labour of love that is cloth bound cheddar. So um, we've got several different cheeses to try and before we go into trying them, I promise we're going to do it soon, I'm going to talk about the ingredients that go into cheese. Now traditionally there should always be four ingredients in cheese, there should not be anything else, especially when it comes to a cheddar. So there should be your milk, your starter culture, your rennet and your salt. Now the thing that makes our ingredients very special is the milk comes from our own cows. Now, in the States, I call that farmstead. Um, that actually can be quite unusual, that it, all of your milk comes from your own herd. Many, many cheesemakers, especially when making it on a very large scale, don't buy it from one herd. Um, so we have 600 cows. We have a split herd, a spring and an autumn herd, so that when one half is in calf, the other isn't. That means we always have a milk supply. We are never having to buy it in and, and, and to, to get milk from somewhere else where we, we don't necessarily know where, where, where those cows have been grazing. We are totally in charge and we have a huge, amazing farm team who are constantly looking after our girls. Now, our herd of cows are a really specific breed in that they are a complete mix. Um, there is um, Kiwi Holstein, Frisian, Scandinavian Red, we've got Jersey, we've got Montbelliard. They're a real lovely culmination of all these different breeds. And the reason for that is that they give the kind of protein content, the fat content, the right fat globules for our style of cheese making. And also they're very good on the land that we are currently grazing in, in Texas, which, not Texas, I've just seen someone saying Texas, in Devon, um, which is, is rolling hills. It's very lush, it's very green. And there is of course, an awful lot of rain. So they're, they're, they're fabulous. They are outside and they are grazing on very lush grass pastures um, year round. Um, they do have areas to go into as well and we do top up their feed when the grass isn't as good but they have the most fabulous life um, and, and they are actually very lovely cows. Um, so we've got the cow's milk coming from our wonderful herd. We have goat's milk coming from a lovely lady called Lucy, who is a few miles down um, the road from where we're based. We're experts in breeding cows, we're not experts in goats. So Lucy is her second generation farmer um, to be breeding um, her goats. She has a mixture of Sarnin, um, Old English and Alpine and they are the most glorious goats. Although my colleague Rachel will probably testify to them being um, 
quite greedy in terms of the fact that I think her jumper didn't escape an outing uh, to see the goats, unfortunately. Um, but we'll forgive them because they were very sweet. Um, then we've got, so we've got the milk, that's covered. Then we've got starter cultures. Now starter cultures are like your seasoning. They're something that gives your cheese its unique flavour profile and they can really add, as well as obviously where you age your cheese, to the flavour of the end product. We are one of very, very few cheesemakers in the world that have access to the heritage starter cultures that make cheddar. These are the original cheddar flavourings. And so when people try our cheddar and they go, hmm, that doesn't taste like cheddar, it's because it is cheddar and very few people actually know what cheddar tastes like. Um, we get really savoury, meaty, brothy notes coming through in our, in our cloth bound cheddar and that is down to these amazing starter cultures um, which again have a completely different story that I will go on to talk about on another one of our tastings. Then we have rennet and rennet is a, um, an essential element of cheese making. It's what separates your curds from your whey. And then we have salt and we have a pretty special salt actually and I'm just trying to see if I've got any around me and no I don't oh dear um, and we are using Cornish sea salt so Cornish sea salt comes from just down the road from where we're based it's incredibly clean um, it's got an amazing mineral content and it adds just an amazing uh, just an amazing texture and flavor to our cheese um, many many cheesemakers use just plain bog standard table salt we're using a local small scale company down the road and it's fabulous, it's great to support it. So one thing I'd say is we're talking about milk from down the road, talking about heritage starter cultures that were created in the area within which we farm. And then we've also got the salt, which is just from down the road. So like when you talk about wine and you talk about terroir and, and understanding what's around you, I do the same when I talk about cheese and, and really our cheese is a true reflection of the area within which we're farming and have been farming for hundreds of years. Now, I think it's time to eat some cheese. So, hopefully some of you guys might have some cheese in front of you. Um, so I'm going to run through the cheeses that were um, part of our British Cheese Weekender box, um, which will give you a really good understanding of lots of different um, flavour profiles that you get with our cheeses. And then we're going to talk about how to pair them. And then if I've got enough time, I'm going to put together a cheese board um, whilst we're talking. And then I'm going to send a photo to the Quick's Instagram so you can see and you can copy it when you're at home. So firstly, we have our flagship, which is the mature. This is our, what we're probably most famous for. Um, this is our 12 month mature. It is made with cow's milk. You can see the beautiful yellow color, which has come through from the fact that our cows are all grass fed. You can see the beta carotene that comes through in their milk. Um, and it's this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yellow color. So when you're trying our cheese, the way I would always suggest you try it is you try it from nose, to rind because you're going to get two completely different flavor profiles right up here you're going to get real buttery notes you're going to get slightly more caramelly notes and then we try it up here and i kid you not this is not because we're adding anything to it this tastes like horseradish just under the rind and that is the microflora in the atmosphere within which we mature our cheese imparting flavor on our cheddar it's incredible and it is the most amazing way of trying a cloth bound cheddar and it, it it's what separates this from this, honestly. It is a great way to try it. So I hope some of you who are eating along are gonna be trying it from here, and then you're gonna try it from here. So that is our Quicks Mature. Then the next one we're gonna try, or we will go for next, is the vintage. So you always start with a younger, more subtler flavor, and then you ascend. So you, you, you get more and more intense. So you would never, for example, if you're having a cheese board, start with a blue cheese. You start with something slightly less. So this one here is our vintage. This is aged for 24 months. Um, I've just seen someone say, can you eat the rind? Yes, you can. Um, it's absolutely fav It's, it's fa absolutely fine. Um, it's it's going to be really punchy. Um, but what we've done is we've really scraped the rind. Um, our guys will have really, really cut down as much as possible of the, the cloth has come off and it's just taking off that first layer. But yes, you can eat the rind. Don't be afraid of it. And also one other thing, if you ever get some little bits of blue veining, 
we would accept about an inch to go in and that's perfectly natural. It's not something to be scared of. We call it a cheesemonger's perk because normally it's a really, really punchy version of, of, of this outer rind. Do try it. If It should only be like a little bit of a veining, um, but it's really, really not something to be scared of and really should be embraced. Um, however, if you've got loads, loads more, then that's something that you should send us a photo of. Um, we don't accept sending product out like that, so we always want to know. So if you've ever got any questions, please drop us a line. We're here to help. So this one here is our vintage, 24 months. Again, try it nose to rind, but trying it against the mature, half the age, you will see the difference of what age can do to a cheese. And this is, I use this in place of Parmesan, quite frankly, it's, it's, it's really hard. It's got so much, so much body. It's got so much going on for it. And the flavor profile against here is stunning. Some people, um, they, they use the Parmesan rinds and, and freeze them in a bag and then add them into risottos and stocks like that. Do the same with this. It's great. It adds so much depth of flavor to, to, to stews and everything like that. Then the next one we're going to try is the goat's milk cloth bound. Now this is a stunning cheese. I have been fortunate enough to, to, to travel a lot on behalf of cheese and I have yet to come across something that measures up to this. There is no hard goat's milk cheese that I can find that is as good as this. Now we call it a goat's milk cloth bound. That's because traditionally cheddar should only ever be made with cow's milk. Um, however, it does make it slightly more understandable to customers to know what to expect when you're trying this. A lot of people who don't like goat's milk cheeses like this cheese. So please do give it a go. It's multi, multi award winning. It's aged for about nine months. It's super clean. It's really creamy because it's been aged and it's also been made in the same way that we make cheddar. Um, so do, do give it a look out. And this is from Lucy and her gorgeous goats. And then the next one here we're going to look at is the Devonshire Red. Now, again, made in the same way that we would make cheddar. Now, it's called Devonshire Red because it's our whimsical take on a red Leicester. We're based in the county of Devonshire, so we called it Devonshire Red. It's a much younger cheese. Um, this is aged for about six months. And the reason it is this colour is because traditionally that is what a red Leicester is, is coloured with. Now, it's not some dodgy orange coloured dye that we shove in. We are using a natto, which looks like this. It's a little seed from a plant in South America um, and it imparts this wonderful colour. It's totally natural and the reason we add it is because that's what traditionally was done with the traditional territorial red Leicester. This is a much younger cheese, it's much milder, more nutty, a little bit more creamy. Um, it's, a, it's a gateway cloth bound as well. If, you, if, you're, if you're not into the really, really strong flavours, it's a really good one to start with and then, and then build up. And then finally, the last one in the box is this, which is our cow's milk oak smoked cloth bound cheddar. This is our nine to 12 month matured cheddar. We age it specifically if it's going to be, uh, we, we pick specific profiles that are going to be smoked. And what we do is we cut the cheese down into, we cut our cheese down into like three pound pieces or three kg pieces. And then we cold smoke it for 16 hours on the farm, just opposite where we mature it. And we cold smoke it using oak wood chips from our farm. We have loads of oak trees and we, it's a very sustainable way that we, we um, use the chips. Um, and it's, it's a fabulous smoked cheese. It's naturally smoked. So when we have the big piece, you get more of a smoke flavor up here than you do say in here. Um, because we're not uh, reforming it or remilling it, um, which many smoked cheeses are. So what, what people traditionally do is they will grate down a smoked cheese if it's like say cold smoked, or sometimes people just add liquid smoke to it, which can give a bit of an acrid aftertaste. Um, but what we do is we just leave it as it is so that you've got a smoky bit here and then you've got a less of a smoky bit here because we're not going to remill it. Our poor guys have just spent however long creating this product. For us to do that would be slightly insulting. Um, so that's the cheeses that we've got today. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at what we pair them with. So we have got, with our mature, this can stand up to quite a lot, the mature and the vintage. I would put both of these with a pickle lily. 
something quite punchy. Um, the hillside piccalilli is exceptional. Um, it's also local to where we're based, um, but genuinely is the best piccalilli I've ever come across. Um, those two can stand up to something quite mustardy. If you think you've got horseradishy flavours coming on here, you know, do, do test them, taste them with other similar things. When we talk about pairings, pretty much the world is your oyster. You can try anything. Um, some people say, um, you know, uh, you should pair like for like flavors or what you're looking is a balance, something that really, really works well together. And I have tried some incredible combinations. Feta and marshmallow fluff was one that will stay with me forever. It works, it's really weird. I do have some interesting pairings. Um, the mature with caramel. Fabulous. It's a real salty, sweet, fantastic balance. So really do try. I've just seen someone say cowboy candy, which is definitely something I've got with me and also to talk about. Um, so really nicely as well um, so and they're quite sweet and they balance each other out really really nicely too um, then with the goat's milk cloth bound um, I was expecting one of my brothers to bring me um, some 70% uh, dark chocolate and he has failed to turn up so I do apologize I, I am without one element um, but I would pair these with um, the goat's milk with maybe some like smoky nuts um, I've got some lovely truffly nuts um, here some truffle honey it's delicious can't go wrong there um, this is fabulous these are preserved walnuts and Now, because this is a milder, um, milder, more creamy and lactic cheese, I would I would pair this with something like um, I came across this this uh, it's a celery kind of chutney. Nothing too punchy because you don't want to overpower the cheese. You want them to work together. So something along those lines, um, or some cornichons absolutely delicious and then finally um, just to, to hark back to whoever's just mentioned um, cowboy candy which is something I came across when I was in Texas um, and it is glorious um, essentially candied jalapenos there is someone who um, is making these in Marlow uh, in Buckinghamshire candied jalapenos really sweet and spicy works fabulously I've also got some uh, strawberry habanero jam but again something like uh, a smoky smoky uh, bacon jam something like that can really stand up really really well um, to this cheese so I'd really recommend doing that and the last thing I'm going to do um, before I leave you guys, because I know I'm on a very, very tight time frame, is the one thing that you should definitely make sure you have on your cheese board when you've got our cheeses and also others, apples. Fantastic to cut through and to cleanse the palate in between tasting cheeses, um, because I've just talked about so many different items and products that you can pair with your cheese. It's really easy to get carried away and then just end up building on loads and loads of different flavors and, and losing it a little bit. Um, the other thing Thing that I have to quickly talk about and this is also a very special thing but it's a byproduct of the cheese industry and it's something we also make is we make something called uh, whey butter and um, I want to talk about this because this is this is pretty pretty special we're one of the only people in the world making this on a commercial scale it is you know when I said um, you have your curds and your whey when you're making cheese normally the whey goes to waste it gets put in pig feed, it, it, it can be used to, to compost, um, sometimes people sell it off to make whey pro protein powder or it goes into uh, baby milk proteins and things like that. We re-spin it and we make it into butter. it with whey butter tonight to my family um 
Otherwise, um, I'm going to leave you guys there. Um, it's been a real whistle-stop tour um, with, with Quix. Um, like I say, I'm going to be doing more tastings um, on the Quix Instagram. So please do uh, check us out. Um, I will leave you with this. Thank you so much for supporting the British Cheese Weekender. It really, really means so much. Please buy artisanal, small-scale British cheese. You need to support local and support handmade. And don't just support it now. Support it later on down the line. You know, it's our, our small cheesemakers who really need your support right now. There are people throwing milk down the drain, and it's tragic. And we will lose our food traditions if we don't support them now and continue supporting them so keep an eye out on on the quicks instagram please keep an eye out on the academy of cheese they're going they're doing so much over the weekend and continuing to if you like cheese on the academy of cheese they're doing um accreditations so you can become like a really snazzy cheese person and know your stuff to your friends and have a little badge and everything and and, and they do it, it it's it's really really fantastic um but i will leave you guys with that